What is going on, beautiful people? It is your boy, Charles Botenston. Today, we got another banger for you. This is a guy that I was completely oblivious to until he was on Joe Rogan, and everything flipped upside down. He was on Joe Rogan. His wisdom, his perspective, his logical thinking, his first principles thinking, his stoic thinking, where he came from, how he created his wealth, and then he just noticed that, oh, okay, this is not going to create my happiness, which sounds like a lot of people. Do. You know, a lot of wealthy people say, oh, by the way, uh, being wealthy is not going to make you happy, and then they do nothing else. They don't meditate. They don't go stoic. They don't go spiritual. They don't go and see what the 2,000 Aristotelian years ago people said, they just continuously be wealthy and kind of a jackass. This guy went the opposite way and he said, oh, okay, actually none of this matters. I can't bring this with me, okay? Kind of what Steve Jobs said, unfortunately, on his deathbed is that I can't bring my wealth, I can't bring anything I created, my companies, anything with me, all right? So we get a lot of notes. So if you want the notes, just click the link below. It's gonna go to almost six, seven pages. It'll probably be 10 minutes of reading and it's the exact same thing that you'll get as if you read it, but honestly, go pick up the book. So his name is Naval and I'm gonna, I'm gonna butcher his last name, Ravikin, Ravikin, I'm sorry, but someone else actually took together his Twitter, best Twitter tweets, best of his Twitter, put it together in a book, kind of reorganized it and made it into something that is more digestible. All right, so we're gonna go through a lot of topics. It's gonna be a long video, but I'm gonna, trust me, this is all over the place, okay? This isn't just one focus. This isn't a book about just your gut health. This is about everything and you're gonna love it. I highly recommend you pick it up. It's up there as one of the top five books of 2020 that I read, all right? 2021, I forgot where I, when I read it, but let's start it off. Making money is not a thing you do, it's a skill you learn, okay? This is gonna be a lot longer than I thought, all right? Even if I just start on that, that this in of itself is a rant. I talk about this all the time, is that people go to school like myself that were not gaining any skills. They just put together this thing that you're just memorizing. They're essentially just saying, this is what you should think, this is how you should think go out into the world and there's no new original ideas, okay? Entrepreneurship is only based on new ideas, new explorations, totally different designs, totally different ways of thinking, but we, we are literally just cogwheeling these kids through school and they're not creating wealth. They're just going to a job that they're gonna be with for maybe 10 years, then move on to another one. And as Dr. Jordan Peterson talks about is that most people don't have a career, they have a job and they just go job to job to job until they retire. And they call it a career because it's over the span of 30 or 40 years, but they don't actually have a career career. That means actual advancement based on meticulous, I need to improve on this skill because it's gonna make me level up in this department. And then if I want to actually manage this department, I'm gonna to have to learn that skill. And you're essentially, you're intentionally, that's the word I was looking for before, you're intentionally moving up through your career based on getting attributes that you know will help you move up the hierarchy of your job, your business, your career, your industry, whatever the case is, all right? So making money is a skill that you learn. And if you're watching these videos, you're already ahead of other people because you understand, you have a growth mindset that you can actually get this skill to be better. People that think that this is essentially, and I know I'm just on literally the first topic, that is essentially why I am here. That is my mantra. That is exactly what I wanna be known for, is to make personal growth, make an area that you're not good at sales, marketing, health, exercise, triathlons, relationships, approaching a pretty girl, asking her out, whatever the case is, not being good at it and being okay you're okay that you're not good at it so long as you actually go to learn the skill. I wanna make it cool that you're okay you're bad at it, you're still gonna be bad at it, but it's okay to learn to get better at a skill. We are a society that unfortunately is just demonizing that you may have been wrong, that you may have actually not had the greatest past when it comes to business, doesn't dictate your future, okay? I wanna get away from that and as you should too, all right? Moving on. Getting rich is about knowing what to do, 
who to do it with, and when to do it. It is much more about understanding than purely working hard. Yes, it matters that working hard matters. You can't skimp it, but it has to be directed in the right way. This has to do everything with what um, the one thing, forgot his name off the top of my head, Gary Keller talks about. He said, you have to direct your activities at the 20% that will yield you the 80%, okay? This has been going on for years. Italian economist, Vredo Pareto, I think was his name, came out with the Pareto Principle, is that 20% of the trees will yield 80% of the carbon dioxide out of the air. 20% of the teams in the NHL will yield 80% of the Stanley Cups. 20% of the MLB players will get 80% of the home runs. It's how it works. 20% of the NBA teams will get 80% of the wins. It's everywhere. Inequality in nature is natural. Let me say that again. Inequality in nature is natural. Nature is natural, okay? When we start going away from this whole everyone deserves something, it's like, yeah, that person's better at shooting free throws. That person's a better saxophone. That person's better at gymnasts. D gymnastics, gymnasts, gymnastics. So they deserve the gold medal, not everybody, okay? So it's okay. And guess what? Even better. And the mindset that I'm actually reading right now in the book that I'm reading right now talks about that you have to understand that you're only good at about one to two things. That's it, okay? And this is talking about work, okay? So one to two things at everything. It could be even parenting, relationships, making money, whatever. If you know all the ways to make money, but you're not good at them because you haven't gone deep into them, like I know wealth creation for me is not learning the entire stock market, okay? Mine is to put it into a Vanguard fund that's low cost index fund in Vanguard and just let it go with the market. That's someone else's strategy, maybe totally different. However, a lot of books that I've read, Psychology of Money, uh, Money Master the Game. Both of those books talk about the exact same thing that I just talked about is that unless you are literally the top five fund managers, and even then, they still, over the period of 30 to 40 years, are not going to beat the market consistently on average. Okay? Yes, year over year. Yes, maybe, but not on average. Okay? And there are some people, I said the top five fund managers. Okay? All right? Moving on, seek wealth, not money and status. Okay, this is very important. This is very evolutionary psychology right here. Seek money, I'm sorry, seek wealth, not money, which is very temporary. And it's very, I'll, I'll talk about it in a second. Seek wealth, not money or status. Wealth is having assets that earn while you sleep. Money is how we transfer time and wealth. Status is the place in your social hierarchy. Status is your place in the social hierarchy. Money is how you transfer your time and your skills. Wealth is the creation of having money when you're not actually working. You're moving your money towards an asset that you don't need to be there to earn, be at the job to earn, to be on the call to earn the coaching money, okay? Something that just, you leverage your time out this is how you create, highly recommend Robert Kiyosaki, the quadrant, the four quadrants. He talks about it in great depth, okay? There's four, peop four types of people, four types of earners. We're all potentially in one of them at one time, okay? It's not always into earning money while you sleep, okay? But to get to that is the ultimate form of wealth, where you're not directly trading your time for a paycheck or money or commission, okay? You're leveraging out the money that you've bought, say to homes, to other people like a sales force, and it's 12 people are leveraging their time, but still, you still have to manage them. But if you own the company and someone else is doing it, that's a little bit different, all right? But also, let me go to this, is that a lot of people are actually seeking money and status, okay? Thank God at age 35, 36, that I've learned that if you go directly for status, you will be directly unhappy and 
lost and anxious, okay? Because status does not give you, I shouldn't say permanent, does not give you long lasting joy or contentness. It will give you short term happiness, okay? Money is another thing. Look at Jordan Belfort. He made tons, millions and millions of dollars. You know, what do you say? He made almost a million dollars one year or close to it, or uh, I'm sorry, a million dollars a day or close to it right around there. Look at him. Do you call him successful? Obviously right now, turned his life around, blah, blah, blah. You have your own opinions about him. But for me, the way that I look at it is a lot of people expand their lifestyle based on the money that comes into their life. A minimalistic idea means you keep your same lifestyle regardless of the amount of money you make. Then you take that money, that extra money, that cash flow, that extra cash, and you reinvest that into assets that make you money. That could be a house, that could be a low cost index fund, that could be a, buying a company, getting a major shareholder of a, of a small company, or a laundromat, or a vending machine, or something like that where you have a lot of them and someone else takes care of it. You don't have to do anything, you own all of it and they do a lot of the portion of the work, all right? Moving on. All the returns in life, whether in wealth relationships or knowledge, come from compounding interest. My God, can you have a more powerful statement than that? All the returns in life, whether it's wealth relationships or knowledge, come from compound interest, okay? I wrote next to it, training, okay? I'm a triathlete in the last year, I call myself a weekend warrior because I am not a triathlete, all right? I've not been training as much as I want to, but I texted my coach two days ago and I said, I've been looking at my 2019 statistics, which I was on fire. I was running on fire, I was biking on fire, I was swimming on fire. 2020, 2021 roll around, not as ideal, all right? But what she came back, she said, that's the past, focus on right now. Focus on today. What, what are you doing today? Okay, I know you're overweight, or I know you're in a bad relationship, or I know you're in debt, but focus on today. Start paying your debt down one dollar at a time. Start paying your weight down, losing your weight one minute at the gym at a time. Okay, it's the same thing here. All of it's through compound interest. If you want something that is an amazing read, it's called The Slight Edge. I think it's Jeff Olson, Jeff Olson, Mike Olson, might be Jeff Olson. I think I, I worked with a Mike Olson. Without ownership, when you're sleeping, you're not earning. When you're retired, you're not earning. When you're on vacation, you're not earning, okay? You must own something. You must own something. The biggest tax breaks in, people call it loopholes. It's not a loophole, it's for everyone to know, okay? Everyone knows, wh whoever's a good accountant or, or not an accountant, actually, that's bad. A tax advisor, that's really who the best person is. A tax advisor understands where you should be putting your money, what business you should be starting, how you should be allocating your assets, when you should be hiring your child, what's the amount, what they should be doing, what you should pay them, things like that. They're not loopholes. The government cannot do two things. They can't create jobs and they don't build housing. Those are the two areas that you actually can get the biggest tax benefits. It's good to get tax benefits, okay? God, this whole notion of like getting tax benefits needs to get away from people's heads. Like we pay way too much in taxes already. For what? What do we get? We don't get enough. If it entertains you now, but it will bore you someday, it's a distraction. Keep looking. If it entertains you now, but will bore you someday, it's a distraction. What are we talking about? What are we talking about? Netflix, YouTube, sports, gaming, movies. What? What, what is a distraction now, but it's gonna be bored one day to you in the future? You can ask that to yourself and you should ask that to yourself. And it's a hard question to ask to yourself, but it's necessary. Because there's a lot of stuff that I'm doing, someone else is doing that we could be changing the way that we are distracting ourselves, okay? Distract ourselves into reading a book. My definition of wisdom is knowing the long-term consequences of your action, okay? This is so freaking necessary. This is so vital in today's world. It's crazy to think about where we are in today's world. Listen to this again, 
and I'll keep on going into the to, to the later of his uh, sent my definition of wisdom wisdom is knowing the long-term consequences of your actions. Wisdom applied to external problems is judgment. Let me say that again. Wisdom applied to external problems is judgment. They're linked. Not knowing the long-term consequences of your actions and then making the right decision to capitalize on it. This essentially says that if you do not pan out, if you do not, as I just talked about, compend interest, and I know this very heavily during COVID. I drank too much. I talked about that in an earlier video, okay? Go look up Alan Carr's How to Stop Drinking. I think that's what it's called, or How to Stop Drinking Without Willpower. Right around that. Just look up Alan Carr, A-L-A-N-C-A-R-R, all right? And I go into my story is that if I compounded, there was, there was a Sunday, I'll just go into it real quick, there was a Sunday, after I've been drinking pretty heavily for a year, there was a Sunday where my resting heart rate on here, which I highly recommend you track your heart rate and you track your sleep, this is the aura ring, this is uh, what I use for swimming, biking and running, actually I use something else for biking, bike computer, but this is for running and swimming, and it has my heart rate, and it's tracking it all day, and I was sitting down after a year of drinking too much, and my heart rate was like 85. I was actually telling this to a girl last night. And it scared the shit out of me. It really did. I looked at it and I said, I'm sitting down, and my resting heart rate is 85. Then I looked down, it was 90. My heart was just going like this. There are some people that consistently, consistently live in that area. That's crazy to think about. That is mental to think about, all right? For me, that's not where I want to live. My resting heart rate in 2019, when I was at the top of my game, was 45. I had a, I was doubling, doubling my heart rate, okay? If you don't know what your heart rate is, if you don't know what your sleep is, you're setting yourself up for some pretty catastrophic disaster in the future. I'll tell you that much. Because if I did not know that my resting heart rate was 90, just want to make sure I'm on video, was not 90, I would still probably be drinking. I'd be like, oh, this is weird. As my heart's going, drrr, drrr, drrr. it reached triple digits, sitting down, no exercise. That's not safe. That's not good. That's leading to disaster. Okay. That's long-term consequences. What long-term consequences, what vices are we doing right now? Only you know. It is the dark side that we all have. I didn't want to talk about drinking too much, okay? But it's part of my story. And I don't want to leave it as this cloud of saying, I handled COVID like a boss, because I didn't. I ate like shit, my sleeping wasn't good, I wasn't exercising. I was terrible, to be honest. And that's why I wasn't on this. I, was, I couldn't fake being on this and giving book reviews when I'm not living up to the expectations of long-term consequences, okay? I'm not living up to healthy lifestyle. Oh, your resting heart rate, 100, while you're sitting on the couch? Not good, not good. You, tr honestly, we have to look at long-term consequences. Long-term consequences, long-term consequences. Here we go. Our egos are constructed in our formative years. In other words, the first two decades. They get constructed by our environment, our, po our parents, society, school. Now it's social media. Now it's online. But you get kind of molded like I did on what to think, how to think. So here we go. Then we spend the rest of our life trying to make our ego happy. How many people online are unhappy with things. How many people in our life are unhappy with things, but they're making their ego happy by remaining in that relationship, remaining in that terrible body, re remaining in that brutal job that they absolutely hate because that's making their ego happy because it's comfortable, okay? Nothing happens in comfort. The level of your, I think it was Tony Robbins, to the level of your ability to be uncomfortable 
is to the level that you will be paid and or rewarded. If you can go and be uncomfortable for an extended period of time, you're probably gonna be an endurance athlete. You're probably gonna be a really good salesperson because you can endure the suffering of people telling you to go screw off, getting hung up on, just the day-to-day -day monotonous making phone calls, sales phone calls, all right? God, that is so powerful. Another book, Eckhart Tolle, I think I'm saying is right. The A Beautiful New World, I think it's called. Go read that and it talks all about I don't recommend the audiobook because it's by him. I'm not really a fan of him reading it, but that's completely up to you. We interpret anything through our ego. How do I change the external world to make it more how I would like it to be? Wow, talk about Untethered Soul, another incredible book. Michael A. Singer, Untethered Soul, top five books ever read, okay? How do I change the external world to make it more how I would want it to be. That's all we're trying to do all day, just satisfy our ego. This person said that thing, this person cut me off. All we're doing is living in this external world of trying to make our ego happy. Moving on, here we go. When you choose something, you get locked in for a while. Starting a business, a relationship, moving to a new city, they're very, very long-term decisions. And it's very, very important when we say yes. excuse me, anything that's going to be five years or more, a relationship, moving to a new city, it's going to be five years. Maybe not a relationship, but probably a job, probably a city, maybe a relationship. Take a very, very long-term approach and a very, very long-term idea. Do I want to do this? Do I want to be in New York City? Do I want to be in LA? Do I want to be in this relationship? Do I want to, am I doing this for me or am I doing this for someone else? Am I moving to this city? Am I getting this job for someone else or am I getting it for me? If you're evenly split on a difficult decision, the, the path to take is to be painful. Take the painful path, okay? Should I sit in bed, which is very comfortable, or be painful and go for a run? Should I approach this pretty girl, which is painful, potentially rejected, or should I walk by and say, she might have a boyfriend? That's the comfort route. Always take the painful, short-term decision rather the long-term comfort decision. Lean into things with short-term pain but long-term gain. That sounds even better. Happiness is a default state. My God, that is powerful. Happiness is a default state. And by the way, by the way, it can be trained. I was never this positive. I know I don't sound this positive as I'm like yelling at a camera, but I was never this positive. I was always that guy that the world is out to hurt me, the world is against me, woos me, I'm a victim, blah, 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 crying in my own sorrows. And now I'm saying, how do I create my day to day? How do I create the body that I want? How do I create the job and the life and the relationships and the wealth that I want? Okay, how do, how do I create? Create, we're all creators. My, that is powerful, we're all creators. And default state is happiness. The world just reflects your own feelings back at you. This, my God, is this, I know I'm saying God a lot, but this is, talking about spirituality, what you reflect out is what you're gonna get. I, can, I cannot mention the dozens and 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 dozens, and dozens well into the hundreds of times that I've gotten free drinks, free food, free this, free entry, no fee. That's fine, sir. We'll do it. I, this is only a one-time exception. Hundreds of times that I've gotten, we don't normally do this, but of course we'll move your flight with no fee. I understand and thank you so much for understanding. We will make a one-time exception to give you free return shipping. This coffee is on us. This meal is on us. We got a dessert for you. Don't worry about it. We got a table in the back. We normally give it to four people, but because it, it's two and you're really nice, we'll give you a two on a four top. It happens so much that it's not a coincidence. The first couple of times where I'm like, oh, I got a free coffee. That's awesome. Oh my God, my, my lunch is free today. I used to get free salads almost every single day from the place I went to before it closed because of COVID, but they loved me. And I didn't do this for the free salads. I just did it for my personality. 
I knew everyone's name. I knew what they were about. I knew how to interact with them. This person likes jokes. This person's more serious. This person likes the UFC. This person is day to day or they're going, they, they love getting sneakers from Foot Locker. I just knew all of them based on their traits, not on what I wanted. And then sure enough, they gave me more toppings. They gave me free toppings. They gave me free salads. They gave me free drinks. It just happens. The world reflects your own feelings back. As um, uh, Nightingale said, what was his first name? I just saw his book uh, somewhere. Earl Nightingale? Earl Nightingale said, in The Strangest Secret, and he's got another book, which is essentially is that the number one thing, The Strangest Secret, is that people don't think. Men do not think. And by men, he meant mankind, okay? Men do not think. They don't sit down and have a period of silence with no distractions for 30 minutes a day or 40 minutes a day and say, what did I do good? What do I need to improve? And what do I need to keep doing? Okay, what do I need to stop doing? All right. But going back to one of his books, and I reread it probably four or five times. All right. And you could just listen to his audio book on it. And it's about the power of a positive attitude. Your attitude is everything. It is everything. It's how the world responds to you. It's how the girls respond to you, how business clients, strangers, workers, if you walk in with a smile, it's infectious. It's, they will mirror it back, okay? There's mirror neurons as they talk about. It's sales 101. It's sales 101. There is no external product, progress. There's no external validation. You're complete. You're wow. Sorry. I know I just bumbled and bumbled and fumbled and everything else. There is no external progress and there is no external validation. Essentially what a lot of people do is I made $50,000 this year. I'm going to buy $50,000 worth of stuff. So people know that I am now worth not 25,000. I'm now worth 50,000. I made 50,000 this year. And I'm sorry, I made 100,000 and last year was 50,000. So now I'm going to expand my lifestyle by taking more trips. You're not reinvesting your money. You're essentially expanding your lifestyle as you expand the amount of money just so you could raise, as I said in the beginning, your status to the tribe, to the people that know you and they don't care. It's a single, as I say, as he says here, it's a single player game. You're competing against yourself. It is a single player game. You are competing against yourself. When I'm running marathon, I'm sorry, when I'm uh, running or competing in triathlons, my coach hammers away. This is run your race, run your race. Normally the triathlon is five hours on a half and five, five and a half, probably five and a half. Yeah, it's five and a half hours of continuous exercise. There's no stopping. And then it's, 12 to 13 hours on a full Ironman, okay? Run your race. It's a long day, okay? It's a long day. You're at an eight minute a mile pace. Don't worry about the person that's running 745. You bike at 19 miles an hour. Don't worry about the person that's biking at 20. Here we go. To make an original contribution, you have to have an eel irrationally obsessed about something. Okay, here we go. The most fit and healthy people focus much more on what they eat than how much. On what you eat than how much. To have a peace of mind, you have to have a peace of body first. Wow, that is powerful. I'll leave it on that. I would say that my number one thing in life is to focus directly on my health. My health is number one. Because if I am unhealthy, that affects the relationship with my wife that I don't have, the kids that I don't have yet. But if I'm unhealthy, they have to take, take care of me or take me into consideration. He can't go walking. He can't go hiking. He can't still the scale the steps. He's going to be unable to last for five hours on his feet. He needs a bench. All of these things run through someone's life that's unhealthy. We all know someone that's unhealthy. Okay, I'm not talking about someone that's in their 80s, 70s or 80s. Like my father, he was in his late 70s when we went to Paris. That's older age. I'm talking about someone that's obese. 
I'm talking about someone that is not prioritizing the quality of their food. They're thinking, oh, I just had four pieces of pizza. I just had two pieces of pizza. Why don't you have a salad instead? Prioritize your health. It's expensive when you're older. It's uncomfortable when you're older. You start breaking down easier. You start, you're very unhappy. There's a direct correlation of your happiness. It's, there's a direct correlation also to the amount of money you make, how people treat you, how you feel about yourself based on your health. Your health is number one priority. Then it's mental health, your physical health, then mental health. Because if you just have your mental health, but your physical health is deteriorating, you're fucked. So if you guys like this, go read all the notes on my website. The links are below. If you want to pick up the book or audible, it's also linked below. If you guys have any questions, leave in the comments below, go to icharles.com. I also have a long form area where members are getting me essentially ranting about all the BS that's going on in the world and how to actually fight against it, but also taking great topics that I'm piecing together while I'm taking a shower, I'm going for a run, I'm walking through life, and then stringing it together and saying, here you go. I know I just gave you some great tips within a book, but if you actually apply, just like I did, these four or five things that I just read in the first 15 minutes, you're going to save yourself money. You're going to be more happy. You're going to be able to approach a pretty girl because I go over evolutionary biology and psychology. All right. Anyway, we got it, Charles. Have an amazing day, and I will talk to you.